Thank you, uh, Brother Bobby, for that introduction. Uh, good evening, Dhamma friends. Uh, we are going to get started by paying respect to the Buddha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namu Tase Magavatu Arehatu Sama Sangbundhase. Namu Tase Bhagavatu Arehatu Sama Sangbundhase. Namu Tase Bhagavatu Arehatu Sama Sangbundhase. As uh, Brother Bobby uh, introduced, today's topic is going to be, as you can see uh, uh, on the screen, how can you seek and receive support from Devas? Now, before we uh, understand how to receive support from Devas, we need to understand What do we mean by devas? This Pali word deva comes from uh, a root called uh, divyati. That means uh, someone who is sporting, who is playing. That means devas are always playing around. Happy people. They are play, play. Happy people. They can be happy because they do not eat material food like us. And uh, they were not reborn in a mother's womb. So they have all the uh, facilities, they have all the uh, built in uh, material and mental support uh, for being able to uh, sport around. So the Pali verb is uh, Dibbati. Uh, Dibbati means uh, uh, sport, sport around. So now the uh, the interesting part that you may be very, very much wondering is that uh, these are beings, as you can see uh, behind my photo. Uh, they look very gorgeous, very wonderful. Uh, definitely seem to be able to bless us in their own ways. So, uh, Devas definitely uh, represent a very powerful, very happy set of beings. But they have their own issues as well. And uh, when we understand Devas uh, from a um, Buddhist point of view, we need to understand uh, the purpose of becoming a Deva. And now we are humans and then how do these devas support us? How do the, these devas uh, help us in our Dhamma journey and in, in your uh, secular material journey? Okay. Now, there are a lot of, lots of questions going around uh, uh, the idea of the God, a deity. Now, say for instance, um, you know, there is a certain uh, type of uh, uh, religious, um, I wouldn't say religious, uh, type of uh, group called atheist. What is an atheist? Is anybody aware about how to understand an atheist? Because this relates to uh, theism. Theism means uh, the belief that uh, uh, trusting about the Deva. So, what is an atheist? Hmm? I, do, I know that you don't want to be an atheist, but uh, I just, I'm just wondering whether you know these terms. You know. What is an atheist? Non-believer. Huh? Non no God. Free thinker. Any other uh, understanding about uh, uh, an atheist. The people who are uh, 
labeling themselves as atheists, uh, as you put it, they do not believe in the existence of God, in the presence of God, devas. So can a, an atheist survive uh, as a Buddhist practitioner? In that case, can. How? If somebody doesn't want to believe in the devas, especially the existence of the devas, can that person still follow the Buddha's uh, teaching, especially the, uh, uh, the formal teachings of the Buddha? Can. How? Huh? Ethics, uh, they have their own ethical part, good conduct. But in order to follow the Buddha's teachings, especially the formal uh, training of the Buddha, one has to embrace the Noble Eightfold Path. If someone wants to uh, truly follow the Noble Eightfold Path, the spiritual Dhamma journey, that person has to embrace each noble path factor, we are in which samaditi, the first noble path factor, has a specific naming about the devas. We can go into uh, this as you can see here. Samaditi, this is the unenlightened version, as you can see here. There are spontaneously reborn beings, so one has to uh, have an attitude about the presence of the spontaneously, spontaneously reborn being. Who are these spontaneous beings? Now, Buddhism categorizes four types of uh, rebirths, uh, the form of the rebirth. The first one is undead, beings born out of an egg. Normally, we call some beings are twice born, not uh, once born. Who are these beings? Some beings are twice born. Some beings are once born. <laughs> the Buddha says in the Parabhava Sutta, Parabhava Vasal Sutta, one of these suttas, Ekajang Vijang. Some beings are once born, some beings are twice born. Say, for instance, there is, a, uh, there is a, an egg uh, associating some beings, a uh, river, an egg. So, and that being is reborn out of uh, the place through an egg and then the egg is going to be becoming crack and then the being is coming out twice born. Yeah? It's not rocket science, it's not something. <laughs> That's how the Buddha looks at it. But anyways, these beings are egg born, lots of beings, undigit, we, uh, call them in Pali undigit, perhaps I can write later. Second type of beings are reborn through a womb. We call it Jala Buja. Jala Buja. Right? Uh, it's the uh, womb birth associating a water bag. Yes. Then we say Jala, Jala. So this uh, womb birth, we all are born out of uh, a womb. And then uh, the third type of uh, rebirth is called Andaja, Jalabuja and Sanse Daja. Sanse Daja, moisture. There are some beings who are reborn because of moisture. What are those beings who are born out of moisture? Some small animals, centipedes, some snakes. They are reborn because of this moisture. And the fourth type of rebirth is called Opapathika. The Pali word is Opapathika, or spontaneously reborn. Who are the beings that are reborn spontaneously without uh, any of the previous three uh, sources? They are not reborn out of eggs, uh, no, uh, womb, not from a womb, nor from moisture base. They are reborn out of nothing. They are just reborn. They are randomly reborn. Who are they? Devas. Devas. And then? Ghosts. Yeah, ghosts shouldn't have parents. Huh? 
uh, devas and all the beings in the hells right uh, uh, except the animals animals have parents so all the beings in the hells they don't have parents ex uh, excluding the animals so now if you want to start off the noble eightfold path which is our only path to the nibbana at a certain point then you must believe this particular section which comes under the 10 types of right view as you can see there is meriting giving dana giving big large dana small dana uh, believing in karma good karma bad karma uh, my mother is a special person my father is a special person there is this world and uh, oh, definitely we are reborn and then uh, in terms of the rebirth some beings are spontaneously reborn so that means the point here is that belief in the existence or presence of the devas is an integral aspect of samadhi if you don't believe the devas presence you can be a true buddhist as um, uh, someone can put it yes uh, you can follow a couple of things and then you can say that I'm still following uh, the Buddha's teaching. It's okay. Now say for instance, if you take mindfulness meditation, um, if you go to certain other uh, Western places, uh, they don't want to follow sila. They say if we don't want to hear somebody's telling do's and don'ts and we have our own ethics, but we only... Uh, pick what what we want from buddhist teachings I mean, so there are those people uh, but in order to follow the buddhist teachings we must embrace the noble eightfold path we are in which right view as you can see the the acceptance of the devas is a must so we'll start from there it's not just receiving blessings from the devas it's not just seeking the devas support it's accepting their uh, presence we might not see them but accepting their presence is very important i think it's not a very new thing to all of you you are i think respecting many deva right before you came to buddhism right you even believe there is a god on the earth right right i think i don't have to convince you here <laughs> so <laughs> it's already done long 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 time ago because of your culture. But I'm trying to say the Buddhist version of the devas. That's important. That's why this is not just a cultural belief. This is not a mutation from another culture. This is something where we have to embrace uh, to follow the Noble Eightfold Path. Now this Noble Eightfold Path uh, is always mentioned in the Buddha's teachings. Why? It is the only spiritual journey. How do we get into that? How to get started this Noble Eightfold Path? What is the first thing to do? Huh? Yeah, that's the first one, but uh, we cannot just go there. There's, there's another Dhamma thing to do, to get into that place. Are there any uh, uh, participants who have joined our Sutta studies on Tuesday, BGF Sutta study? Let me know who they are. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I just want to know who, who they are. Huh? Uh, I already shared with you. Long, long time ago. I think we did 20 days for Dhamma Chakra Path and Sutta. Said, it is only by practicing Yoni Su Manasika, wise attention, you can enter into the right view. Without Yoni Su Manasika, wise attention, being able to see the origin of any circumstance, any um, phenomenon is the place to get into right view. Okay, so I am just trying to connect you to the, the uh, interrelated Dharma matters. All right, so believing in the Devas is not only, you may see it as a cultural point of thing, it's not just cultural thing, it is a part of the Noble Eightfold Path. Very, very important. But the way you may believe might be a little bit uh, too extreme sometimes. Uh, devas are everywhere, you know, even this wind. You know, this happens to the Indian people too. 
how did they believe the devas earlier they thought there are many devas here uh, building has a deva uh, sky is a deva uh, what you call uh, sun is a deva they put three devas for the sun s u n sun they said the the morning sun is ushas the the female deva called ushas the sunrise time the sun at the sunrise time and then the normal sun is called surya and then the afternoon sun they call it as savitru they not even told like that they said the rising and setting of the sun can be related to a good person and a bad person very interesting they said uh, uh, the afternoon sun is connected to the relationship with a bad person because afternoon sun starts with a with lots of rays of sunlight and then by the evening it goes down the relationship with the bad people is as such start with big and then go to zero but the morning sun is similar to a relationship with a good person starting with small small things and over time it grows a very interesting nice relationship but at the beginning is like tiny bits of things you are picking up so anyways they said there are three devas with regard to the sun then what about um, uh, the rain parjanya so they were called parjanya and they said vin is not vin it's called marut right and there's no fire it's agni so this way they named all the a natural phenomena into devas and they the scientists are actually saying this could be anthropomorphism is a sociological word anthropomorphism means that you are attributing this natural things onto the the people and then after some time they said no no this is a pantheon of the god devas there's only one deva monotheism they had to go from pantheism uh, uh panentheism into the Uh, what you call monotheism only one god the only one god is mahabrahma hinduism has been evolving a lot um, so this way uh, if you look at hinduism there are lots of devas but they said one important thing you cannot connect with any deva without the agni deva the fire god why is it the priest in the the temple uh, is your focal point if you are a follower of hinduism at that point you have to go to the the kovila uh, temple and then the oblation is been done by the priest and then through the support of the priest and asking the fire god the priest can send all the messages to all the other devas varuna parjanya all these devas so uh, the belief of the devas has been always there but when it comes to buddhism there is something very important basically what is that devas cannot reward us devas cannot punish us they are not people who can punish us they are not people who can reward us but they can support you uh, rewarding and supporting you could be it could be similar in a way but uh, they they can reward you not in the way that you are doing something good for them but by becoming a good person they are going to support you so today at this point we are going to understand the concept of devas and then slowly walk into um, understanding this concept how to get blessings from them according to one book in the kudaka nikaya it identifies there are four type of devas first one is uppatti devas uppatti deva who are uppatti devas kings queens and royal figures i mean they are they are treated as devas all the time anywhere in the world right the buddha says there are uppatti devas right it doesn't mean that you have to respect uh, them uh, unlimitedly but uh, we have respect for them in a different way Sammuti devas. These are the devas residing in the six heavens. And these are the devas we are talking about today. 
we call them as Sammuti Deva. Okay. Third Deva category is Visuddhi Devas. This group includes Arahans and Pacheka Buddhas who have attained Nibbana. Arahans and Pacheka Buddhas are also Devas. We call them Visuddhi Devas. Devati Deva. The highest Deva in terms of purity. Samma Sambuddha. Buddha is also taken as a Deva in another format. Right? Devati Deva. So, uh, kings, queens, royal figures, Upati Devas, uh, conventional normal Devas go under Sammuti Devas, Arahans, Pacheka Buddhas go under Visuddhi Devas, Samma Sambuddha goes under Devati Deva. But our uh, focus is going to be for these conventional Sammuti Devas. Something very interesting uh, coming up now. Now, in the Buddhist teachings, especially in the early Buddhist teachings, Buddha is asking us to think about two things with regard to Devas. One thing is that before you look for the Devas blessings, you, you should be able to become a Deva in the form of a human. Because all these Devas were previously humans. All the ghosts were initially humans. All the yakkas were initially humans. So the Buddha is asking you as a human being, you can be a deva. You can live a life as a deva here. Right? So the Buddha encourages this us uh, to practice in our life. Number one is Brahma Vihar. By practicing four Brahma Viharas, you can be not only be a Deva, but also can become a Brahma. What is this actually? What, is, what are the Brahma Viharas? I think you know. All. What are they? Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekta. Can we understand this Pali word, these two Pali words? Brahma Vihara. What does Brahma mean? Brahma means? No. Brahma means the highest. Higher or highest. Brahma. Okay. Uh, in that we understand there are Brahmas. Within that category we understand Brahmas. Vihara means living. That means highest form of living. Now we are living, how many days we have been living so far? 2024 has been going very fast, October uh, 16, right? almost many, almost 10 months have been already going. So, have we been able to live every day with Brahma Viharas, the highest form of living? Then only we can become like Brahmas. Brahma is another type of Deva. Deva Deva, Brahma Deva. How to spend life, how to spend the day with metta. If you can do that, you will be like a Brahma on that particular day. If not, you will become a Yakka. If you cannot practice metta on that day, you will become a Yakka. Right? There is an interesting story coming up uh, somewhere. Maybe I can share with you. Remember, there was a time in the heaven, Tavatinsa heaven, uh, where the Sakka is living, one anger eating Yakka took over Sakka seat. Very interesting. Normally, Sakka is going to take care of other people. But that day, one Yakka took over his seat. But Sakka was not in the heaven at that time. Other devas were very angry. How come you sat? On our chief deva seat, you cannot, you couldn't have sat down. But every time they are complaining, that ang uh, anger eating yakka becoming very handsome, pretty, nicer, beautiful looking. He was very short, okay, short, ugly yakka. Every time they were complaining, yakka 
grew uh, beautiful, happy, maybe a little bit taller too. <laughs> and then they informed uh, Saka, you know, one of the yakkas, I don't know what kind of yakka is this, sat on your seat. So we were trying to uh, bring him uh, out of your uh, seat, but he doesn't go. Then the Saka came in. Saka sat down on the floor in front of his uh, seat, now where the Yakka was staying, and then kindly and happily told uh, this uh, anger eating Yakka, I am the Saka, I am the Saka, I am the Saka. Then he expired from beauty and then the uh, height, and then he left. That means there are some Yakkas even in our life. Our society is too. When you are complaining about someone's anger, that person can live more with that anger. Don't complain about other people's anger. Right? They live with anger at that point. They think that anger is their food, their beverage at that point. So Sakka told other devas, you don't complain about this guy. If you keep complaining, he becomes more beautiful. Right? I think it's true. Sometimes in our life too, uh, when you complain about someone who's very angry, mad, that person is surviving more and more. Right? It's better not to complain about those people and but to do something in the proper way. Probably talk in a nice, kind way. When you talk nice in a nice and kind way, what happened to Yak uh, Saka? Uh, that Yakka uh, disappeared. Right? Normally what happens when someone is angry, the other person also becomes more angry. That is the worst. And then they are pointing out, no, no, I, I was not an angry person, but because of you, I became angry. Putting blame on the other people. Right? So, uh, metta, that means only if you can practice, has been able to practice metta in your daily life, then you must have lived a life of Brahma, like a Deva. Karuna, it is the same. Have you been able to spend many of your days with lots of compassion, kindness to you and to other people? Then you have been spending a higher type of life so far in this year. And Mudita, have you been able to spend your day with lots of happiness for other people's success. Over you always struggling every day when you look at social media, other people going somewhere, they posting photos, I'm here, you are there. Were you becoming so jealous about these places? I'm eating this food, that food. I have a uh, signature uh, food plate today and you are far away, you're not moving anywhere. How many, how often have you become jealous throughout this whole months of time? Or were you, being, were you able to be happy for what other people uh, enjoy in their life? You don't want to relate that to your life, right? That means you have been able to put mudita into your daily life. And upekha, balance of the mind. Have we been able to balance our mind? Oh, our mind is always going here and there. Sometimes too happy, sometimes too sad, sometimes uh, too overwhelmed, right? Is it going here and there? Oh, we are able, have we been able to uh, set it at a certain place where we can uh, feel okay rather than becoming wearied time to time? So if so, you have been able to live as a Deva. We call it Brahma Vihara. So the Buddha asks us to become a Deva. Humans have the potential to embody Deva-like qualities, like Deva. Second is, if you are a parent, you can be good parents to your children. Thereby you can become Devas in a way. As Buddha said, Brahma Mata Pitaru. If you uh, practice the Sigalo Vada Sutta's uh, responsibilities side, then definitely you can become Devas. I have given uh, notes, uh, maybe I can share this link later, don't worry. You can see all the 
if you can click on this link it will go to the sutta you can see over there yeah you can see all the proof and then uh, third one is very interesting it's about couples buddha said uh, humans can become devas in the form of a couple if you are a partner if you are married uh, you can think about this whether you are a deva or a yakka you can see Couples, partners can either live as if they are divine beings, deva, or descend into a more destructive, devilish existence, yakka. Buddha talks about four types of partnerships in a relationship. First partnership, a male yakka living with a female yakka. Not a good uh, <laughs> type of partnership. Uh, and second one, a male yakka living with a female deva. Third partnership is a male deva living with the female yakka. The fourth one is a male deva living with the female deva. Let's take a look at what are these categories. Patama Sangvasa Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya. Living together. Uh, the translation used as a zombie, yeah, which we don't agree with this. <laughs> this translation, zombie, you can see. Okay, the first one. How does a male yakka live with a female yakka? Uh, if the husband or partner, male partner, kills living beings, steal, commit sexual misconduct, uh, make musawada, uh, break, uh, break surah mere, not even that, uh, unethical or bad character, uh, living with lots of uh, much stinginess, abusing, insulting, uh, and if the uh, female partner, wife is also of the same character, then that partnership is called two yakka joined together. Right? Right? That kind of partnership. Second partnership is a, a male yakka lives with a female deva. It is the opposite. That means the husband or the male uh, side, that person is making all these akusalas, but uh, the female side is not doing any of the akusalas, uh, doing the, the good side of those ones. The third one is the opposite. The, the male side is a deva and the female side is yaka, doing the opposite. That means male one is taking care of all this good side and the female one does not. The fourth one is the both they are practicing together. Sama sama, right? <laughs> together. Practice together, not practice alone. In many family households, only one practices. Other person is different. They are very much worried about how to bring this guy into the temple, how to bring this person into the temple. We, are. we have lots of complaints from many people. right? Maybe one person does not believe what the other person does. right? So something is wrong somewhere. So here what we understand is, the Buddha says, you can become a deva in the form of husband or male partner and as a female partner wife when you are taking care of yourself in terms of the dhamma practice right okay so these are very interesting aspects that means the buddha said you can become like a deva before you become an actual deva in the next life so uh, then the uh, another idea here is that what the Buddha is asking us, don't wait to become devas. You can become devas now, right now in this life. Okay. Then I'm going to share with you a general, actually my plan is to uh, give this talk for one hour, almost uh, 36 minutes gone. Uh, and then we, we will go for a q and I think you may have lots of questions about it. Answering those questions might be more uh, interesting at the same time. There is a, a general definition of how you can become a deva and how to get the blessings of the deva. Speak the truth. Devas really like those people who speak the truth. That's why we understand that uh, even in the jurisprudence, the divine side is always attributed to the jurisprudence, law. Speaking the truth. But by understanding, by understanding, how to tell that truth at that time. Sometimes when you are going to tell the truth, there may be a problem going to start off. Maybe when you say the truth, two people are going to clash. 
What are you supposed to do at that time? Are you still supposed to tell the truth? No. Because safety is number one. In normal life, safety is number one in the building construction. But in the spiritual practice, uh, making sure the safety of every being is number one. So we are going to delay that truth. Because we know by telling that truth can create problems. Right? We can do a lot of things. We can walk away. We can uh, change the conversation. right? And maybe perhaps we can delay the truth in whatever the way. But always try to speak the truth. It's good for you. You are very honest to yourself. Devas like very much when you speak the truth. Number one. Second, do not be angry. Devas really hate people who get angry. Huh? Now from tonight, you just think about whether you want Deva or not. Uh, you become angry or not. Whatever the reason in your household, uh, there are people who think that I want to become angry to put blame on my husband, wife, children, or my relationships, other people. You may look at a certain small area of the problem and trying to put blame on other people. Never ever do that because devas don't like you at that point. So never become angry. Try to look at the alternatives for the anger. Are there any alternatives for the anger? There are many alternatives. Think about alternatives. Is it necessary for me to become angry? Is there another way to solve this problem? When everything goes wrong, think about it. Is there another way to do at this point? Just going mad without going being mad. What are the good ways to approach? What are the good ways to respond to this person even? Sometimes you can postpone your emotions. Today you get a very bad message from someone. You get a very bad email today. What are you going to do? You are going to postpone the response to that email uh, or the message until maybe tomorrow. But some people get more angry huh, when you postpone like that. How come I I've been expecting this reply. You've been putting me for three, four. I was not sleeping also the whole night. <laughs> but when you postpone some emotions, good things happen. Same thing. Just, just think that tomorrow I'm going to reply to this email. If it's not very urgent, then you can lower your anger. I'm, I'm giving you some tips to get you liked by the <laughs> uh, devas. Third, Give when asked, if only a little. That means, give what you can. Right? Give what you can. Sometimes you cannot. Then you cannot. If you cannot, means you cannot. But if you can, you give. In whatever the way. Never ever account your generosity. Like how you spend money for food. You must have a feeling. I don't want to simply spend money. But for generosity, if you do something, never count that. Never count it. Right? But you do in a nice way. You set apart your funds, but do it a nice way. But uh, Viharas temples have to do the counting uh, because they are liable by the uh, uh, tax departments. <laughs> they have to do it. Otherwise, they will be in trouble. But uh, personally, whenever you are generous, never count that. Uh, do it in a nice way. Right? So these are the three things which they uh, which uh, motivate devas to like you. So when you are speaking the truth, when you are not, when you are, everybody can be angry, but if you are getting angry very less compared to your past, and you are now trying to look at different other alternatives, you are much better than before, and then being generous in whatever the good way. This is. How do you get the normal attention of the devas, any deva in this universe? Number three. Now we talk about devas. Who would like to get the support of Sakka, the head of the devas? That must be more enriching. We will see him. how to get the support of the Sakka. What kind of people does Sakka favor? Understanding this can help more. normal human being receive support. Gahatta Vandana Sutta. What does it mean? Ghatta means lay people. Sakka venerate, bow down to the lay people. Have you ever heard that? Sakka respect you. You never know. 
but if you are only this kind of person. When Saka goes on a pleasure trip on a joy ride, he starts by raising his joint palms toward four directions. His driver Matali notes that Saka is venerated by both Deva and humans and asks whom he is honoring, respecting. Saka responds that he honors both well practiced monks and virtuous lay people. Let's go and take a uh, stanza out of the Sutta. I'm going to pick this one. Ye gahatta punya kara sila vantu upasaka dammena darang posenti. I worship those householders like you, ethical lay followers who have sealer, not even that, who make merit, providing for a partner in a, that means, dhamme in a dharam, those who take care of your spouse and your children. That means if you want to uh, get the respect, veneration from the sakka, you must be able to Take care of your family well. Take care of your family well before you come to the Vihar. There are some people who take care of the Sangha members only. They don't take care of their family members at home. They don't take care of their mother at home. They don't take care of father at home. They don't take care of wife, husband at home. Always only in the temple. Just to avoid these people. That's not nice. That's not the way how the Buddha said, take care of your family. Then the next step is these spiritual activities. Right? Otherwise, Sakka will not respect you. If you won't get the support of Sakka, do that. Okay. And then, uh, interestingly, I'm going to, uh, this is the uh, one of the most interesting aspects of the discussion today. How can we engage in activities that please the Tavatins and Devas? and cultivate the qualities of a Sappurisa. The Sutta, Vatapada Sutta says that the Devas in the Tavatinsa heaven categorize you as a good person only if you have seven qualities. That means if you want to get the support of Tavatinsa Deva, you must have cultivated these seven qualities. Let's go and take it a look. Okay, number one, as long as I live, may I support my parents. If you want the Sakha and all the other Tavatin Sadeva, they are a little bit avant-garde, high quality Devas, <laughs> Tavatin Sadeva. Number one that you are going to do is you have to support your parents not only one day, not just for the Chinese New Year, not for the Christmas, but for the whole life until you finish. As long as I live, may I support my parents. You may have some issues with them, but you should know how to support them in your own. Number two, as long as I live, may I respect, honor the elders in the family. Respecting the elders. Elders can come from many ways. right? Not even the age. What are the other forms of uh, elders, seniors? Uh, sangha members, they are elders too, right? Uh, sangha members, they may be very uh, young, but you are still respecting them. Why? Because they have sila, samadhi, panya qualities then. Respect, right? So you are going to respect, honor the elders. Third, as long as I live, may I speak gentle words. May I speak gentle words. What are the gentle words? Are we talking to others with gentle words or well, we don't care about it? We just communicate with them. The Buddha's uh, Sakka and Devas really like people who talk to others with gentle words. And the fourth is, as long as I live, may I not speak divisively. That means we are not supposed to break people's peace. We are not supposed to divide other people's connections, bad mouth about other people. Right? Are people doing that every day? Since morning till the evening? What is the first thought that comes to you? If you were the Buddha, then you must have come with this kind of thought. Who am I going to help today? That's the Buddha's thought early in the morning. What if somebody is coming up with a thought like, 
who am I going to break today? <laughs> in relationships, friendships, whatever other thing, good name, reputation. Such a bad thinking, uh, ill will. What is that you are thinking? Who am I going to help today in my whatever capacity? Dhamma wise, maybe otherwise, my family members, relatives. So that means you are really trying to unite people. That's such a very good thing. Right? If you do that in your this life, nobody can destroy your relationships in the next life. How many people are struggling in this world? When two people are go, uh, having a very good relationship, somebody is coming and break this relationship. It's happening in some places. Take the man or take the wife out, saying the good things to them. But if you have not used divisive speech, bad mouthing, you will never experience that. Then, fifth one, as long as I live, may I live at home rid of stain of stinginess, this means generosity. May I be generous as long as I live. May I never become greedy, stingy. And then sixth one, as long as I live, may I speak the truth. Why these devas are truly like people who talk good words, who speak the truth, who don't get angry. That, there must have been a reason. Because they, these are normal things that can happen to everybody, speaking the truth or lying, not talking to others in nice ways, very, very normal things. But if we can use a little bit of mindfulness, we can still talk nicely. We can still use in a nice way. We can still speak the truth. Finally, the, the seventh uh, uh, quality that devas in the Tavatins expect us to do is, as long as I live, may I be free from anger. Not even that, more importantly. Oh, should anger arise, may I quickly overcome that anger. How many of you practice metta meditation every day? Don't be shy. Shy people cannot practice Dhamma. Yeah, it's an, it's an honest practice. You have to be honest. You have to be... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uju Suju, the Metta Sutta says. This integrity, honesty. Yes, I practice meditation, Metta. Who can say that declaration? Make it. It's not a practice in the corner of your house, in that isolated room. That means we must practice it every day. No matter what we do, we have to create time for that, at least five minutes. But how many of you have brought this addition to your metta meditation? In case, actually not in case, definitely we get, you may get angry during the day. In case anger is to arise, I am going to quickly overcome it. Not let it grow, but let it go. Who has added that part to your metta meditation? Then we are practical people. Anger is normal. I, we know this bad, but when the anger is arising for whatever unforeseen reasons, we should be able to abort it, overcome it on the spot. But many people cannot because they don't look at it that way. Right? So it's a very realistic expectation to think that, may I quickly overcome my anger. So these are the seven uh, things that we are supposed to do in terms of getting the Tavatinsa Deva support. Tavatinsa Deva say, if you have these seven, you are a wise person. We support you. Okay. Then, uh, the last uh, area in our discussion, I think the most important, important part. What should people to do, uh, do to gain the support of the Devas? Number one, practice the Dhamma consistently with commitment and creativity. This is very interesting. There are people who practice Dhamma only during a retreat, only during a Dhamma talk. When they go home, they forget everything. Right? It's like after Dhamma talk, they write down, they record, they video. They are thinking, ah, if this talk is going to be on YouTube, I'm going to look at that, watch that too. So they bring this Dhamma seed to their house. 
but they have not been able to plant it. They will never plant the Dhamma seed. They always carry the Dhamma seed back home. They carry, carry, carry. Then the house is full of Dhamma seeds. But none of these Dhamma seeds have been planted so far. So that's why we are saying, I'm telling you here, pra practice it. How to practice it? When you bring it home, think about, ah, okay, the speaker told like this. But how to do it in my life? How to incorporate this particular small drop of Dhamma into my daily life? You customize the way. You customize that piece of teaching, even the thing that we are talking today. And then try to practice it consistently. Second, we need a commitment. Uh, can you turn off the, the flash, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, then we need a, a consistency, a commitment. What is the commitment? What kind of commitment are we supposed to do? Do we have to do a commitment in Dhamma practice? If you are a Mahayana follower, they have commitments. What are the commitments? Bodhisattva vows. Interesting. See? You are Bodhisattva. You are Bodhisattva. I am also Bodhisattva. I cannot do anything wrong to you, right? You are also Bodhisattva, right? Right? You are also Bodhisattva. But in other traditions, I am not going to name them. No, you, I am Sotapanna. You are still normal person. Huh? I'm learning a lot, but you're still learning, I think, Diga Nikai, but I read Diga Madhima Sangyutta, you know. I'm, you are here, I'm here. So, <laughs> that's clearly a problem. Because we are not judging people the with the level of Dhamma knowledge. It doesn't matter. It matters in a way, but it doesn't matter to practice. Uh, Knowledge-wise, it might affect. But practice-wise, it doesn't affect. And we should not think that way too. Sometimes there are people who have never been to a Dhamma talk, but still good, better than many people. They've never been to a Dhamma talk. They never know what is Buddhism. But they have this Buddhism built in. Other people have to add on. They have to buy add on, <laughs> to add on stuff. But they are built in. I'm not saying that you are not better than them. Uh, this practice thinking is something very interesting. So you have to commit. Whatever happened, regardless of whatever the things, I am going to stay committed to my practice. Then creativity, innovation. We have to be creative in our Dhamma practice. How to be creative in our Dhamma practice? Tell me. Uh, so far, I've been thinking, somebody might say, meditation, I cannot do meditation. I have to sit down on a... I cannot sit, sit too long. A lot of people make that statement, right? I don't want to go to a retreat. I don't want to meditate, even in my house. Why? I have to sit down. Who said to sit down for meditation? Did the Buddha say like that? Who said so? There is a meditation called Anapana Sati meditation. Uh, breath meditation. For that, Buddha said, if you sit properly, it is better. But other meditation, how many other meditations are there? Driving meditation. Has anybody done driving meditation over here? Huh? I think you drove here. No, nobody gave you a carpooling, right? You all drove over here. How many of you have done that? How to do driving meditation? Drive with some amount level of mindfulness. Scanning the road, properly understanding the, the, the environment ahead of you, behind you. Understand the blind spot of your vehicle. Understand the blind spot of the other cars who are moving around, moving with you. All this needs a little, some level of mindfulness. What if that you are only thinking about something else and driving? Then you are not mindful in that driving part. Cooking meditation. And you are, if you are not a fan of this foodie stuff, you are cooking every day. Have you done the cooking meditation? What is this? <laughs> we call it mini meditations, sacred poses. When you go to the grocery shop to buy the, the, the what do you call these items, when you bring them, when you go to the grocery shop, you have to understand what fruits to buy, what vegetables to buy, are they ripen enough, are they raw enough. When you bring them, 
how am I going to cook them? Right? Maybe I'm going to take the, the two ripened ones first. In cooking, in, in uh, doing the preparation, how to cut them properly, how to peel off, how to uh, you know, do all these small, small things. It, it needs lots of awareness, mindfulness. How do you know that you haven't had mindfulness while, while cooking? The moment you get a wound, you cut your fingers, you understand. So, these many meditations are everywhere. Cooking, driving, even talking to somebody, talking meditation. How to do it? Talk to other people with some awareness. What am I going to talk to other people? There are many people who talk to other people later on. Ah, I think I talked something wrong to this person. Why is it? Has not thought what to talk. There's no talking meditation for them. So then, the idea is creativity. We have to create our own meditation with regard to walking, talking, cooking, driving, anything. So that, that is very important. So when you have a Dhamma practice with consistence, commitment and creativity, Deva support you. Number two, learn Dhamma properly. When someone learns Dhamma properly, the Devas treat them with the same respect they show to Sakha. When you learn Dhamma properly, precisely, Devas consider you uh, that you are worthy for a respect that they are doing for the Sakha. Number three, Devata Anusati. When you practice a Devata Anusati, you will get the support of Devas. What is Devata Anusati? Let's go and take it a look. The Sutta here. Furthermore, a noble disciple. Disciple recollects a Deva. There are the Devas of the Chatu Maharajika, four great kings, the Devas of the Tavatinsa, Devas of the Yama, Devas of the Tusita, Devas of the Nimmana Rati, Devas of the Paranimita Vasavati. Uh, and uh, when these Devas passed away from here, they were reborn there because of their Sadda, trust about the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, seal ethics, learning. Dhamma learning, sutta, generosity, chaga, and wisdom. I also have the same kind of sadda, means ethics, uh, learning, sutta, uh, dana, or chaga, generosity, and panya. So you can think about that de devas became devas because of the same qualities that I I been practicing and you've been practicing. Thinking thus, you are doing the devata nusati meditation. Devas like that. Devas know these are potential beings to the Deva world. Number four, merit transference. We understand that we have to do Devata Bali. You see, Devata Bali, not Bali, yeah? Bali. What is Devata Bali? The Buddha said we have to make offerings to the Deva. Where do we find that people offered uh, offerings to the Deva? Any sutta? How many of you have been chanting Ratana Sutta? Do you find any, any place where people respect uh, Devas with offerings in that Sutta? Divacha Ratto Cha Harantiye Baling Tasma Hine Rakkata Pramatta. What is happening with the Ratana Sutta is that Buddha told Ratana Sutta to the Bhante Ananda, and Bhante Ananda is telling the Devas, You are not. Nice, huh? These people in the Visala city have been giving you, uh, what do you call, offerings to you every day, morning and evening, divacha rattoja, but you have not come forward to support, help them. What do you think, what may have gone wrong? Maybe they have not properly done the offerings to the Deva. Pro perhaps their offerings have not been materialized. Maybe they have prayed wrongly <laughs> to the Devas, but Devas did not show up for them until Ratana Sutta was said. That means uh, it is our responsibility to do Deva offering. Don't think that it is only Chinese culture thing. It is also the Buddhist culture thing that we have to make offerings to the Devas. Right? 
uh, and then a part of that is giving good karmas to devas at the end of any good karma merit how do we do that ittavata cha amme sambatan punya sampada sabbe deva sabbe bhuta sabbe satta akasakta cha bummatta deva naga mahitika so and so forth why are we giving good karmas to devas at the end of any meritorious activity why why can we just uh, finish our any activity the buddha said we must give because when we do as such we are becoming selfless at the end of the good karma before the good karma we might think we have not done enough good karma but after the good karma bodhi puja buddha puja chanting dhamma talk sutta study retreat what will happen to the normal mind of anybody uh, today i made lots of good karma i am more special than those people who have not been able to come here i am better than all of you so little bit of sakaya ditti ego can go higher that is the point the buddha said don't take it alone with you you have to share with the devana gamaitika so that you are becoming selfless you understand there was a meditator before but then i understood there was no meditator there was an observation only and there was a person who came to the dhamma talk puja but at the end i understand there was no person came in but the good karmas are there you are becoming selfless nameless selfless that's what we want so then we have to understand in order to get the blessings of the deva we must make offerings at the same time share good karmas with the devas at the end of any good karma number 5 cleaning cleaning this is a sutta somewhere in the uh, fifth book of anguttara nikaya buddha says when you clean when you have a clean place when you keep your house clean and tidy when you keep your room clean and tidy you feel happy and you make other people happy more importantly you attract the minds of the de devas devas like clean places devas don't like those unclean places they cannot come so we have to understand that cleanliness is very important in our spiritual practice right so if you but don't become obsessed with cleanliness too there are people who become obsessed they cannot even go to a hotel why is it it's not clean like my clean compared to my house obsessed and there are other people who are sweeping the house no 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 i have to do by myself then only this house become clean uh, these are obsessions addictions we need a bit of cleanliness but not too much obsessed with the cleanliness then it will hold us back into something else but cleanliness will attract the deva this is very interesting never sleep unmindfully mukta sati sutta because if you sleep unmindfully devas won't like you <laughs> we'll go to this sutta unmindful interesting sutta why you should not fall asleep fall asleep unmindful okay there are five drawbacks of falling asleep unmindful and unaware what five you sleep badly number 2 you wake badly third you have bad dreams the devas don't protect you that means any time you doze off you become drowsy and then uh, sleeps without a, some level of mindfulness then devas won't come to give you the support now interestingly why there is a mention about uh, devas who cannot uh, help us how to how to sleep mindfully tell me that's interesting right how to sleep mindfully is very clear then when you sleep you know you are sleeping that's it there's nothing else this is not a hard core meditation you know i'm going to sleep now but there are other people who are not sleeping but they are sleeping right they are not sleeping but they are sleeping they don't know what is happening to them right that means we should know we should drowsiness come from different reason maybe you haven't slept well last night maybe you have a problem you have a insomnia 
uh, you have other other problems but in buddhism the buddha says sleep with mindfulness that means not satipatthanas importantly satipatthana can help you but uh, this is a very simple understanding that okay now i am sleeping then you understand when you wake up okay i am waking up a lot of people when they are waking up it's a very different world to them <laughs> what is this because they haven't stepped mindfully and then they are waking up is also going to be very terrible right so never sleep unmindfully devas won't protect you you, you won't have the deva immunity at night huh? during the sleep if you want the devas support sleep mindfully the seventh one is interesting metta practice i think you know this when you practice metta one of the uh, benefits of metta is there are 11 devas protect you let's see uh, 11 benefits when you uh, have metta translations have some issues but what are they you sleep at ease you sleep well number one when you practice metta you sleep well number two you wake up well number three no bad dreams number four humans like you number five non-humans love you that means including and devas protect you when you practice metta you can't be harmed by fire poison or blade also your mind quickly enters samadhi that means if you want a samadhi you don't have to go and hit a lot of retreats you practice metta your mind will be instantly on the samadhi then your face is clear and bright you don't need to, don't need to buy a lot of cosmetics anti-aging you know rejuvenation stuff you know you save lots of money you don't feel lost when you die you die also with mindfulness unless you are uh, going through a very bad accident when you try if you if you if you die properly somewhere you die with mindfulness. what does it mean you know you are dying that's it it's like you know you are sleeping so this is as you can see here devas protect you as a result of metta practice we're going to talk about another uh, uh, two more. Consistent Dhamma practice can lead even Deva to place garlands on your deathbed. We have a story about it. Dhammika Upasaka, Dhammapada's 16th story. Let me share it very short. Dhammika, there was a man called Dhammika. He had lots of children, daughters. Just before he passed away, daughters thought we invite uh, monks to come over to our house and then to bless our dad with the satipattana so, so they invited monks a lot of monks came because he was uh, helping the temple so they started now chanting the satipattana sutta halfway of the satipattana sutta he said stop the monks thought they are nilad monks okay i think we think that he is tired now so we have to stop this chanting we have to go back to the temple so they told the daughters your dad is now retired, so we had to stop this chanting. We're gonna go back to the Bihar. Then, after a while, the father came back to normal, asked from the daughters, Where are the monks? Then uh, they said to the father, Dad, you asked them to stop. They stopped. They left. No, 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 I didn't ask them to stop. I asked the devas who were trying to put garlands around my neck to stop. I'm still doing another good karma. Let me intensify my good karmas. And then he passed away. That means devas are waiting to welcome you if you practice what you call, if you have a consistent Dhamma practice. Right? Now, normally we know the moment where you get a garland, you go for a very uh, specific event only for you, right? But devas are waiting to put garlands around you, right? If you have a consistent Dhamma practice. Last one, never trespass to cut down trees in the forest without first offering metta to the tree deities, devas. It is said that uh, in one story, one monk wanted to make a kuti. At that time, perhaps these individual monks did not get a lot of devotees support. So he uh, grabbed an axe, he started now cutting one tree, just went to the forest, started cutting. What happened? There was a female deva in that tree with her son. She became very angry. You are destroying my place for, for uh, 
uh, me and my son to live here. And then she almost thought she wants to kill the monk. But she was thinking, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to overcome my anger and go to the Vihara, inform the Buddha about this thing. So she went to the Vihara, Jitrana, and she said, Mante, I had a very bad anger, but I was able to quickly manage it. And I wanted to tell you this thing. And Buddha said, yes, you did the right thing. And then the Buddha asked monks, never cut trees in the forest without sending metta to in the same way, we have to understand when you go to a new house, you must do a little bit of chanting because there are other beings before, maybe a brand new house, but the land was owned by spirits. The land, the land was existing for many centuries. Some spirits didn't, don't like to uh, leave the place. You may build a new house, you may own the land, even a house, even a new place, even an old place. We must do that, you metta. Then you are getting their help, getting their support. Right? So there are nine ways we, we discuss about uh, how to get the support of Deva. Once again, practice Dhamma consistently, commit with commitment, creativity, learn Dhamma properly, uh, and then think about what Devas have done in their life and what you are doing. And Devas are like, like in that idea. Do merit transference to them. Uh, cleaning your place, cleaning yourself and cleaning your place, both. Number six, never sleep unmindfully, practice metta. Consistent Dhamma practice again, that will help your dead bed and never trespass and never uh, do anything without sending metta to these people. So these are the things that I suggest uh, uh, throughout uh, our talk. How to seek and receive support from devas come from these steps, which we discuss uh, through these uh, nine places. All right. Any questions now? So we can pass a mic uh, for anybody who have has any questions about this topic. Yes. Uh, Swami, you can raise your hand, brother, but we can pass the mic to anybody. <clears throat> you can ask about devas or any questions that you have. Yeah. Uh, Pante, thank you for the uh, inspiring talk. Uh, just now, Pante was talking about uh, cutting trees or uh, entering to an empty or new house. Do we, uh, in our garden outside our house, to cut the tree, do we also have to do send meta or do we actually move to a new house to do that? If so, is there any special uh, uh, spe specific uh, chanting we need to do? Thank you. Mm. I assume two uh, situations with regard to that. One is that you are uh, moving into a new house, right? Second is that you already chanted the house, but you planted the new tree. Now the plant has become a tree. So if you want to cut it, normally it is said that uh, most of the trees are surrounded by the spirits, the devas, because they want to stay. Uh, this could be a deva, this could be a yakka. So it's better to send some metta to them, uh, saying that we are not going to abandon you. Please find another place and give some metta to this person, anybody who is in the tree, and then uh, do for the activity. Uh, normally we understand if the tree is there for many years, uh, definitely this can be possessed by a deva. So better to practice, uh, do the Karaniya Metta Sutra, enough Metta Sutra. Actually Metta Sutra starts from this story, that means monks went to the forest, they did not uh, send Metta to devas in the trees and devas started uh, chasing them out and then Metta Sutra can help. Pante, good evening. Good evening, um, yes. So, so Pante said um, transfer merits to Deva, um, offerings to Deva. So what type of offerings we can give to Devas and transfer merits, uh, how, how's our mind 
uh, state of mind when we transfer merits or meta. Because uh, to me, Tiwa is like higher than us, human. They are. And, and mm-hmm. um, how we cultivate that merits that we transfer to higher, uh, those that higher than us. Thank you. Okay, so the level of uh, level of uh, conditions the, the does not affect uh, merit transference. Uh, that means uh, even they are higher. Some devas are on the ground. There are many devas. Akasakta, uh, deva in the sky. They bhumatta devas uh, on the earth. So it doesn't matter. It is it is the power of your wish. May these good karmas be shared by any devas. Then it will be sent to them. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. So the the first question you were asking is about uh, what was the first part of your question? It's about. Um, Just now, uh, Bante was uh, answering me about mental state or the what type of offerings that uh, offerings, give yeah, to yeah, deva. I remember. Uh, it depends. Uh, there are no specific type of offering. It depends if you. If you are a Hindu, you have your own way. And if you are a Chinese, you have your own offerings. So it depends because they believe differently. Um, as Buddhist, uh, uh, now we don't understand that uh, Vesali, people in the Vesali were Buddhist. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, you might offer the same thing that you offer to the Buddha. Because you are, let's say, if you are doing, I think, I think uh, this is also different. If you go to Sri Lanka, they offer the same thing: uh, water, flowers, food, and everything. I think you are not offering cooked food that much, right? In Chinese culture, they don't offer cooked food. They offer the raw stuff. Uh, fruits are fruits. In Sri Lankan culture, they cut it into uh, into different uh, parts. Uh, so uh, it depends. It depends of the culture, but. Offer something. Uh, don't need to worry about what you offer. Offer in the way that you are com- comfortable. But other than that, there is no particular place where we find that this must be offered. Uh, there is no such thing as such. Uh, people may say different. Now, uh, some time ago, I remember somebody told me, uh, one day I've been offering mangoes to the Buddha. And I asked, uh, okay, good. Because Buddha likes mangoes a lot. I said, how come you know that? I don't know. He likes mangoes. Uh, I think I haven't seen any place like Buddha likes mangoes. Uh, but then at a certain point, this person told me, uh, I've been offering mangoes all the while, but still my life is terrible. Then I said, you change mango to dragon fruit. Change these fruits. Because Buddha is tired of these mangoes, you know. Be innovative in your Buddha Puja. Why do you offer the same thing every day? Even monks don't like it. Every day you offer rice, rice, rice. Change. One day something different, right? If, you, if they are okay with that. So it, it depends. There's no such thing that we have to offer this and that. Maybe the similar thing. Same thing. Uh, same level, uh, number of things you can offer. Uh, or in your own way. So there are no particularly specific uh, items to be offered. If you cannot offer, you can do one thing. Do the merit transfer. That is uh, more important because they need good karma. Because some devas, when they pass away, they directly went to the hell. Very interesting. Some old kamas took control of their life. So um, def- I know definitely in your culture you are offering fruits and all that. In addition to that. Uh, do the merit transference. Uh, do a wish. May you, may they, may, uh, may all these good karmas be shared by you. May, they, may you be well and happy. May you also attain nibbana. Who is, who is wishing devas to attain nibbana? What a beautiful uh, wish, right? I think, I think that is enough for that. But they, can we ask what the help can we ask from devas, like uh, to do well in our business, to raise funds for the temple? These are things. I think they all are included in the prosperity, abundance. Uh, remember a story, a real story. 
king kosala uh, was was not sometime a very good person he is looking is is going after women ladies one day when he was traveling he wanted to have one lady who is already married so he made a plan the plan was he said to the husband you should go and bring uh, certain uh, plants that are supposed to be in the naga world naga world i call it naga as dragon naga world but you should bring them before this time he gave a time maybe 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock yeah. if you cannot bring if you bring them late you will be punished with the capital punishment so he was so uncomfortable now the king is saying this to me he didn't, he didn't know the plan here so the wife gave him a packet of rice that day uh, now he can't even eat because this is such a terrible thing right mm -hmm. so on the way he stopped by uh, he could not eat the packet of rice so he saw the fish in the lake so he gave away all the food and the deva in the tree saw the problem this is a good man i should support his him he is in trouble this king is such a bad guy he is going to do something wrong to his family then he came uh, as a different person maybe as a poor person asked why are you so down today why your face is so terrible can i help you then he said the whole story but this deva devas can go to the naga world he said okay i will help you then he went to the naga world and then he brought him the the relevant particular plants now he is rushing to the uh, the palace the king king is even uh, very uh, bad to mean to him he closed the gate he asked people to close the gate even before the time but he managed to go there very fast and then he was able to give king was very astonished how come you found these things then finally it's because of the power of the deva because devas can feel your they can empathize you if you are a very good person something good will happen to you if you are rejected you will be rewarded but don't just keep this thinking all the time ah it's okay to be rejected so deva will come and help me don't keep this laid out thinking you do you have keep the purpose <coughs> keep the hope but you may feel it's not my effort something has helped me you know what it is but you cannot share with other people too maybe sometimes on the road you were almost going to encounter an accident but somehow you were safe what happened i don't know what happened somebody is helping me i don't know who who that is um, what i suggest is through the teaching don't depend on these devas but if you are a good person they will be there by default to help you support you when you practice these things too so don't think about the fundraising don't think about anything devas will take care of you take care of your fundraising <laughs> okay please um you talk about the uh, merits transfer to the deva would you recommend any specific chanting ah. and i wonder um yeah, in the spiritual world what makes it rational that they would understand pali <laughs> interesting uh, the answer to the first question is that uh, chanting. chanting actually we have uh, pali chanting for giving good karmas to the uh, devas if you can go i think i have a script over here uh, transference of merits and dhamma wish if you can go here i can give you i think every bihar also has this see this one ittavatachaammi so these pali stanzas with the deva naga other mighty non human beings these three and these three too so these are the chanting for giving them so it's number one and the second question you ask do they understand pali <laughs> they do because many devas have already seen the buddha their life span is much much way higher than longer than us and they are very sensitive to pali just like a music teacher is very sensitive to the sound just like a foodie is very sensitive to the food taste but the problem is sometimes if you don't know the pali properly at least to the extent of these tenses 
you are going to chant and they know you don't know the meaning of this chanting. They can understand. Right? But the opposite can happen. You may be chanting for the ghost and you also don't know what you are chanting. Ghosts also don't know what you are chanting. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen. <laughs> so, devas must be a different category. So, they are very sensitive to this Pali teaching because say for instance, you are going to chant Metta Sutta in English or in your other language. Still, it's a good effort. You know, doing something uh, uh, rather than doing nothing. But then what is going to happen is that you are understanding through your own language. But whenever you say Karaniya Matta Kusalena, these non-human beings, they know this Sutta million, billions times, uttered by many monks, Arahans, Buddha and all these Devas. They know, they are very sensitive to these Suttas. That's why we encourage, do the Pali and then do your own uh, translation. Do the both. That is the way. Good evening, Pante. Good evening. I'm Brother Sister Nadama. I have a question here. Um, 365 days, we all live in and out and do our own daily course and observe our Buddhist way of living, supposed to be. But for me, I do not follow what is new moon, full moon. So I don't observe that. Is that will lower my value for that? Thank you, Bhante. Is that? New moon and full moon. Yeah, is that? What did you say? Finally, is that? Uh, value our, uh, what you call our investment in our uh, uh -huh. learning. Okay. Thank you. I think as Chinese, you are giving more focus on new moon, right? Yeah. Not full moon. Am I right? <laughs> Probably. Looking at the number of people who are coming to Bihar is on full moon and new moon. Uh, okay. This is the idea. What is the Pali term for this Uposata? What is Uposata? Ah, very connected to the Devas. Before the Buddha's time, it is said that Uposata, the day that you live near the Devas, is Uposata. Why is it? New moon day, full moon day, we are affected by the moon. How? Moon is giving lots of energy to this whole universe. What are the changes we can see during this time? You can see in the ocean, there is high tide. And the mentally sick people become more mentally sick on that day. Law enforcement, they, they bring more patrolling on that day. More crimes are happening on this day. People having lots of, lots of uh, energy, bad energy. Then, at that time in India, they understood. Then, if this day, or new moon, full moon, a day of lots of energy, we better focus this day, our energy focus on something good. A day that we live closer to the devas. Mm -hmm. Then, they take precepts. Actually, uh, they, they do other offerings too. But the Buddha said, on this day, take the precepts. Eight precepts. So you are managing your uh, unnecessary energy. So it is very important for these two days to do something like that. But normally what you do is you go to the uh, Vihara and you do the chanting. But normally on these uh, lunar days, uh, new moon, full moon days, uh, we have to understand our energy levels are so high. So we can do more akusalas if we are not taking care of us. So there is an importance with regard to these two days. Uh, to do something good, especially with regard to the Kusala side, compared to the other 28 days. Uh, Bhante, is it good to observe uh, the precepts on all uh, full moon day? It's okay. Yeah, that's what I am saying, full moon and new moon. It's, it's good if you can. Not necessarily, but it's, it's better. It can help you. Uh, yeah, it can help you. Okay, we can take another two questions and we will wrap this up. Timing. Uh, there's also a view to say that Buddhists should not be involved in ritual practice. So, what is this ritual practice as against you go and make offerings to some of the deities and so on? What is Can the ritual? Explain, yeah. What is the ritual to you? Ritual practice. 
So ritual practice the Chinese go and pray uh, all the earthbound okay. deities and so on. So yes. then he said, Sotapana must not be involved in ritual practice. Uh, good, very good yeah. point. Okay, now you may understand today that Buddha asks us to make offerings to the Deva. So offering to the Deva is not the ritual. What is a ritual in Buddhism? That one we will have to understand. We call it, we have a name for that in Pali. Huh? Let's write something here. Let's do for a change. This is the Pali word for Silabhata Paramas. Translation, clinging to rites and rituals. So does it mean that rituals, you can't do any rituals? Clinging. There are people who only do these things. They never practice other things. Right? Clinging is the problem. But uh, offering to the devas is not a ritual. It is a practice. According to this uh, Sotapanna problem, Sotapanna, if you want to become a Sotapanna, you have to overcome this issue. With regard to this Sotapanna uh, matter, uh, Buddha says rituals, actually the, the, the translation is a problem actually here. Uh, what the Buddha says is a bad seal or extreme seal. At that time, there were people who acted like a dog. They talk like a dog. How to talk like a dog? Just bark. Yeah. <laughs> right? They always bark, bark. And they slept like a dog. Yeah. Uh, in one of the sutta, Majjimani Kaya's Kukkuravati Sutta. Uh, and then uh, they ate like a dog. They drank like a dog. Then other people asked, from the Buddha, Bhante, what is happening to this particular man who is acting like a dog? Then you know, it's for sure he will become a dog in, in his next life. Because you acted like a dog, you become a dog. There's no problem. We call it Kukkura Buddha. Ah, Kukkura Buddha. This part, Vata. This is called Kukkura Buddha. Then at the same time, one man showed the Buddha, they see that man, he is acting like a cow, ruminating, chewing all the time, uh, you know, making the sound like a cow. What will happen to him? Why is he doing that? He wants to become an enlightened person. That's why he's like that, give a lot of pain to the body. Now he became a cow. No doubt, in next life, he will become a cow. Those are the Sila Buddha Paramas. Doing certain activities, thinking that those activities will give him or her Nibbana enlightenment. Those are the Sila Buddha Paramas. But making an offering to the Deva, giving good karmas to the departed one, they are not treated as rituals. So we have to very carefully understand this. So if you do any practice thinking that uh, this will help you attain Nibbana other than the Noble Eightfold Path, then that is becoming a sila paramas. Otherwise, uh, of making offering to the deva is not a sila paramas. But I have to warn you, there are people who are too much making offering to the devas. That is not a good thing too. Because you are not practicing your dhamma journey. You are only focusing, I, I don't want to do anything. I expect devas to bring everything to me. Uh, that is, that can be a sila uh, paramas. But uh, other than that, making offering to the deva is not a ritual. Yeah. That's how we have to look at it. Okay, maybe we can take one more last question. If you have. No, Bhante. Um, just now you're talking about the offerings um, 
if you offer, let's say, like uh, animal offering, like chicken and whatnot, is that is that actually a good offering because that's killing a being? Okay, interesting. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, this is a very sensitive topic, right? Not saying yes or no. Um, it's better if we offer something not like that. But normally, uh, if you are killing, you if you are killing, that's a problem. But there are food made from outside. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that uh, try to offer something that is not as such. But in the normal culture, what people are doing is they are just offering what they are eating. Because you have to offer what you eat. Huh? Right? You're offering what you eat, not what you don't eat. Right? So, uh, the Buddha has not said that uh, you cannot offer uh, these things and those things. He simply said, offer offering to the devas. Now, even a Sangika Dana, you offer everything, right? Uh, the, the culturally accepted things. So, that's how we look at it. We, we cannot say that uh, it is good or it is bad. Uh, what Buddha said, just make your offerings according to your cultures. Uh, now, I cannot say that uh, this is how the Sri Lankan people of uh, Isa, they are offering. You must do the same thing. I cannot say that. What I can say is the idea. Make offerings to the devas. That's enough. So, then uh, you are doing something for them. <laughs> okay, we will stop with this question. Yeah. Sorry to have additional mm. question, not really a question. Add on to his quest, uh, subject on the uh, killing. Now, when I do, uh, when they have the dana, I do my own cooking. So, for example, I cook uh, my prawns, uh, masala prawns for the pante to eat. So, in my mind, I only think of, I want to cook something special for my pante. That's all. So, I do not think of killing and all these things. I just want to say, I want to get some prawns and go home and cook for the pante. I'm not doing killing, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's why I told you we cannot specify the different type of food. Buddha never said um, that we have to worry about what kind of food we are eating. Uh, Buddha said you have to worry about how much you eat. I think these questions are not uh, in that part. Uh, it also doesn't mean you can kill beings, but here uh, you you have bought this food from elsewhere. So I'm, I'm trying to say, uh, doing due respect to the vegetarians uh, in the world, vegans, vegetarians, for, for what they are doing. Uh, or, or on the other hand, uh, if the vegetarians become too angry about non-vegetarians, that's not nice too. That's not meta too. So we, we cannot specify the type of food we are offering. Now, in many places we understand, uh, uh, Buddha rejected a pure vegetarian idea. I mean, Devadatta asked him, uh, Bhante, make a rule to every monk. Uh, you cannot eat meat and fish. Buddha said, no, let anybody want to be vegetarian, be vegetarian. Uh, but it's better to have uh, become vegetarian at a certain point uh, to have some benefits. But if it is not your choice, you are not bothered by Buddhist teachings. So there are options uh, to look at it. Uh, so, Buddha is more worried about how much food you eat, not what kind of food you eat. Because if you look at uh, other places uh, uh, in the world, they, they may not be able to uh, access to uh, plants at some places. But if they could access to plants, much better. But this is a conditioned world, so we cannot create any uh, theories that uh, people should not eat this and that. So, better not to bring food to the religion. <laughs> if you bring food to the religion, discussion will be very terrible because we are trying to step over to somewhere that is not relevant to us. Because relevance is uh, to go into this journey, spiritual journey. All right, I think hope uh, we yeah. can wrap this up. Yeah, thank you, Bhante. Thank, thank you for uh, sharing with us a very enlightening talk on the, from the Sutta point of view about how to make a Devas like us and uh, support us. So, uh, can we invite Bhante to share marriage with us? Yes. Uh, so, at this point, we are going to transfer all the good karmas to the departed ones. 
may all the good karmas we've been making today by understanding about how to get the support from the devas uh, and all these uh, teachings in the form of good karmas be transferred to all the departed ones who have passed away in the name of all of us may they be well and happy and may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo idam me nyati nang hutu sukita untu nyatayo me deva naga mahitika our a point of discussion today uh, also share all these good karmas may they be well and happy may they protect all of us for good health quality of life and prosperity may devanaga mahedika also finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 etavata cha amehi sambhatang punya sampadang sambhi deva anumudantu sabha sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amehi sambhatang punya sampadang sambhi bhuta anumudantu sabha sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amehi sambhatang punya sampadang sambhi satta anumudantu sabha sampatti siddhiya aka satta cha bhumatta deva naka mahidika punyantang anumuditva chiram rakham tusasanang aka satta cha bhumatta deva naga mahidika punyantang anumuditva chiram rakham tudesanang aka satta cha bhumatta deva naga mahidika punyantang anumuditva chiram rakham tumang paranti Chirang Rakhang Tutwan Sadati. May we be able to be in the company of Kalyanamitas till we attain Nibbana. We understand Kalyanamitas are not just friends, they are helping us to uh, stay committed, consistent in our Dhamma journey. So let's make this Dhamma wish. Imina Punya Kamvena Mami Bala Samagamu Satang Samagamu Finally, may all the good karmas we've been making today by learning about devas and how to seek and get uh, blessings from them be supportive and helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Blessings. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pacha inu Chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukhaṁ balaṁ ayurā rūgya sampatti sangha sampatti me vacha atu nibbāna sampatti imināti samichyaku sādhu 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 sādhu